everybody and welcome back to the witch's tea party and this video um i don't really know what to call it because let, let's just call it candle magic knocking it up a gear <laughs> because some people after watching yesterday's video wanted a little bit more um information i think it was more on this sort of sinistral dextral doobly thing and sort of ramping things up so Let's, I've got my notes so I don't forget anything I was going to say, um, as usual. <laughs> and I've got my cup of coffee too, so we're all set to go. Right, so I've got my white candle again. And the first thing I'm going to say is you won't find me talking about colour correspondences with candles. And the reason <coughs> being, that's my son barfing up along, I think. <laughs> so yeah colour co correspondences because people assign colours very differently individual to individual um, you know what, what I m may choose to use for a healing somebody else might think oh you know pff, no that doesn't resonate with me so that is why you won't find me talking about colour correspondences find your own make a note of your own it's a very personal thing so with that said got this candle again and i guess the first thing <clears throat> we can talk about is reversal works advanced practitioners will know what reversal works are you know you basically want to turn something around and the idea is you'd have your candle and you, you effectively you're making what is the base end sort of, you know, this is where am I? This is wick end. <coughs> this is base end. You'd make this base end into your wick end by obviously using your knife, taking this off to reveal the wick, and then effectively, you know, because this would then become your base. Your candle is burning then in reverse. So instead of burning upright the way there you go upright the way that you buy it with the wick where it should be lop that off make your new wick turn the candle round it's gonna burn in reverse so that's candle <coughs> butting um, and then we get into this kind of thing I've not got the flipping jar now Yesterday's video you saw like this long tall glass jar and usually you'll see candles, um, double action candles where they're two colours into one, you know you might have black white, black green, black red, that kind of thing. Um, but if you don't have access to those, and particularly in the UK you don't tend to see candles like that around so much um, unless you make your own candles if you make your own candles then obviously it's not a problem you can dip and do your own type thing if you don't do your own candles and not everybody does um, we're back to this whole pin <coughs> thing again and I've not got the pins but you take your candle and put a pin in halfway down the length of your candle um, and you can use sigils with this let me be a bit more clear with, with a double action candle the idea is that you are first half burning something away Let, let's say we want to burn away the negative gumph. So you burn your first half, which is the negative gumph, and then your second half, which on a coloured candle would be a separate colour. And in this case, we're working on, you know, <coughs> first half negative gumph, pin drops because it's got rid of the negative gumph. Second half would then be allowing for the good stuff. So I hope that made sense, <laughs> I didn't ramble too much. 
So yeah, you can use your pin that way, and you can, you, you know, you could use the sigil thing again, you could write on the candle again, that kind of thing. Um, figurines, I was talking about figurine candles yesterday. Um, you might find male, female, and all the, all the rest of it. Um, so we'll take that as an example. Um, you don't need figurine candles to do this. If you want, let's say, to bring two people together, it could be male, male, female, female, male, female, whatever. If you want to bring two people together, you have, you know, your two candles, and you could do this with a separate colour candle for each. Or you can carve your sigil in to the candle itself, right on the candle. Um, and effectively, <coughs> well, you would move, to bring these two people together, you know, you would bring the candles closer together. If you wanted some separation with these people, you would move the candles apart. It's really simple stuff. Um, sealing. Sealing things. Sealing workings and things. And you might think about things like spell bottles or whatever. You would... I haven't got one. I haven't got one. <coughs> okay, let's imagine my many box is a spell bottle. And the, what you want for this kind of thing is one of those soft... What I call soft wax candles where it's one of the drippy drippy things, you know. These candles that burn clean and don't drip, that's no good for what we want with this. Um, we want one of these that kind of burns and oozes wax all over the place. So if you imagine the Rennies is our container, you would burn your candle on top of the container and as this drippy drippy wax comes down and coats the container, you are sealing whatever is within said container. Um, we can use that process in workings where, let's say we want to smother something out, um, we, want, we want to <coughs> encase something, we can use that method if we want to preserve something, because think about cheese. <laughs> think about Edam cheese and things where they, they're covered in this wax coating. If we want to preserve something, same process again. You've got said object and candle on top, and as candle burns, you know, it sort of drips down and encases the object so that it becomes preserved. And then you'd take that off and do whatever you wanted with it. Um. Rebirth spells, um, rebirth workings, where, where there is a need for something to end, something to die, for something new to be reborn. Now what we would do, and um, I guess this is a very similar sort of concept to the ethos within Buddhism of rebirth, in that you would allow... Are we still on screen? There we go. So you'd have your two candles. One would be burning. And again, you can use sigils and things. You could carve onto the first candle um, a sigil or write words onto the effect of what the old <coughs> thing is that, you know, is dying. And you'd let this candle burn all the way down so it's burning off what is dying. You know, this old thing. <clears throat> and then once it's burnt all the way down and just before the flame is about to die, you would then light a second candle for the rebirth, this anew, this thing that you want anew, and you'd carve into this candle 
with your sigil or put your words on the thing that you want a new because the idea is that the old flame you know this thing that um, is no longer when it hits the second candle it's not the same candle that's burning but the flame is the same so it is reborn so that would be sort of um, anything of a rebirth type theme and you could also utilize that in workings where I guess you want you know a similar method if you want um, change of fate um, change of fortune that kind <coughs> of thing you'd use one candle and you'd you'd intone this candle for you know um, what we want to burn off and then you would take your second one for and intone it for this <coughs> change of fate or uh, you know sort of change of circumstance whatever and we'd across because we're you know progressing from one to the other <coughs> um, what else have I got on my thing you may do da day okay let's talk about this um, intoning let's let's kick up our intoning a gear a notch so I'm going to use this candle because it's not wobbling around so much <laughs> so yeah we've we've anointed we've sigiled we've done whatever it is that we're doing um, with said candle when it's dressed and it's ready to fly and we did yesterday's video did the whole sort of um, receptive projective type thing and I said that we could kick that up a gear um, <coughs> with this sinistral dextral motion and this sinistral I'll get into that let's just take a step back Let's look at hands, yeah, because of hand motion. Um, I was talking about how <coughs> gesture is a very powerful tool. So within that, we can utilize our fingers and thumbs, I guess. <coughs> um, you could utilize them as the five elements. So thumb would be sort of all your earthly um, material type themes as if you think about pentacles within <coughs> tarot that type of theme um, then you would have workings of air um, and then you're into the realms of communication and thought middle finger being above all the rest is spirit so workings with spirit ring finger <coughs> makes common sense really ring finger is your emotions it's sort of the deeper inner you the self that kind of thing and then little finger sexual energy um fire element strength that kind of thing <laughs> um, linking into palmistry now we've got again got our hand so we have I've got a diagram somewhere let me find my diagram because <coughs> I was rooting through some bits and pieces and well okay so kind of makes sense really your pointy finger your index finger is workings to do with <coughs> i guess leadership and influence and then we would have a finger for um corresponding did i say index finger jupiter did i say that I don't know. Did I say that? I did say that. I'm just checking with my son. <laughs> right. Next finger across. Um, we've got Saturn. So money and material themes. 
you know so if, if you've got your little I've not got my pot but if you've got your little pot of oil <coughs> let's say our little pot of oil and we were in torn in our oil and it was to do with finances you know you'd kind of do your intoning and then with said finger you know I don't know whether you can see that we're intoning with the finger that corresponds to that purpose and it's the same thing if you sort of intoning around your candle and anointing your candle and all, all the rest of it um, next finger along <coughs> corresponds in palmistry to Apollo so within that realm we have things like love, home, um, family creative processes creative sort of ideas and things and same thing again if you were doing your oil or if you're doing your candle and things um next finger along um where are we <laughs> next finger along mercury so mercury we're dealing with um anything let's let's just say anything of a sexual matter and communication so again you'd be working sort of this finger or you're intoning or you're anointing or you when you're intoning oil and things now the thumb the thumb is slightly different in that the thumb has three sections um the base nearest the palm is all to do with your desires and your instinct so when you sort of you know if you were intoning you'd be working this section you know with your your hands or if you were sort of if you were doing the intoning by holding that would be the portion that you want most in contact with your candle the I guess the, the middle section of the thumbs is to do with logic and the logical mind. So if you were doing a working where you needed assistance in a situation to to be able to tack it, tackle a problem, let's say, in a logical way, you'd, you'd be focusing on this middle section of the thumb. Um, <coughs> And then the top of your thumb is all to do with um, strength and strength of will. So, you know, if, if we are, let's say we were doing a working way with something, we wanted something away, the finger <coughs> most applicable to your working, I guess, is this strength of will. You know, it's like utilize the gesture and the corresponding finger appropriate to the working that you're doing in such a way um back to this and this isn't actually going to be a long video today 18 minutes oh hey ho let's have just have a quick drink of coffee then <laughs> while we've got time hmm okay um oh just before I get on to the last sort of portion, I mentioned herbs, and yes, you can use herbs. So let's give an example. Let's say you have a relationship, it doesn't have to be a partnership, just sort of any relationship, friendship, that kind of thing, <clears throat> even working relationship. And you want that particular person to have an illuminated view of a situation you want them to actually see the truth of what's actually happening you could utilize your candle magic with your oils with your sigils and all that jazz and you know <coughs> fingers and things um, and something like eyebright because eyebright is that clear vision take those blinkers off i think that's probably the down-to-earth layman's term that i'm looking for in my down-to-earth speaky if you want somebody to get rid of them blinkers take off the rose tinted glasses you know do a bit of candle magic with your eye bright um so right let's get to this 
sinistral dextral motion. And <clears throat> I will put a graphic up at the end of this video so that you, you can see, I guess, you know, a bit more clearly what I'm talking about. Um, we find sinistral dextral motion within nature, um, things like movement of tectonic plates and things like that, and um, shells is a prime example, that's a simple example. Um, and again, it's to do with this rotation from, um, you know, from base to apex. It's the rotation, like, like the thread on the screen, like I said in yesterday's video. Um, <coughs> and the idea is that you would utilise this rotation sinistral if you wanted, say somebody's ill, you would use the rotation initially, the sinistral rotation to rid of said ailment. Um, and then you would use the dextral rotation for the regeneration, the beneficial <coughs> aspect of your working. And that, that also applies to if you're in a situation where you want to remove an obstacle or a blockage, um, or if you want to remove a problem area, you would utilise this whole finger thing and this um, rotation, whether it be, you know, if you want to remove these blockages, problem areas, all the rest of it, you would use the sinistral rotation, you know, around, and then you would use your dextral rotation to bring in the regeneration and the beneficial aspect of your working. So I hope that's kind of cleared that up and like I said I'm going to put a graphic oh god I'm going all blurry I'll put a graphic right at the end so that you can see what I'm talking about and you'll notice in the graphic that it's a graphic of two shells and you, I guess you'll see the difference of what I'm talking about um, and we can relate this, this sinistral dextral motion to things like labyrinths um, this sort of various motion we can we can relate to um, spirals <coughs> and things. Um, if you were, uh, like I said, I'll put a graphic at the end, and then if anybody's got a question after when they've seen this graphic and you know whatever, just get in touch with me and. If there's something that's not quite clear, because I do tend to ramble, <laughs> I'll try and be a bit more clear. <laughs> um, if anybody is, because we have sort of bordered on to palmistry, if anybody's interested in palmistry, there's a book that I've dug out of my sort of library. And it's called A Manual of Modern Palmistry by Michael P. Moore. And I hope you're not getting like uber glare on that, but whatever. Um, it's by Aaron Press, and it's it was printed in the 90s, so I'm not sure whether it's still in print or whether you're going to have to go and get something like second on books or whatever the case may be. Um, and it, it really does go into everything of sort of distances between fingers, the finger spacing, um, length of fingers and all the rest of it and the nice thing is that I'm just going to try and hold this up to screen the illustrations are very simple so, you know they're very clear so if you're interested in ooh, a bit warm if you're interested in sort of developing palmistry skills a bit more this isn't half a bad book so anyway I will say, for now, much love, many blessings, I hope you've got something from this video. If you've got any more questions, just, you know, give me a nudge. Um, and I will see you on the next Witch's Tea Party. Bye for now.